What is up guys? Today we're gonna to cover something on the channel that a lot of you have been asking for. There's actually a previous video about it, but today we're gonna to do a better one. If you search back through our over 150 automotive related videos, you will see that we previously did a video on the same subject but I didn't really like how it turned out. At the time that month I was doing daily videos, so I was a little stressed out while I was doing it and uh, it definitely shows through a little bit. So today we're gonna do it over. I'm gonna go through everything a little more thoroughly and uh, hopefully you guys find this video because a lot of people asked about how to do this when there was a video, but uh, here it is again. So here we go. <laughs> I already did that. If you're watching this video, I assume you have somewhat basic level of knowledge about LS ECMs and computers and how they work and the wiring and stuff. It's obviously an important part when working with these newer LS engines because everything is electronic now, a bunch of sensors and you gotta make it all work and you gotta make it work in a standalone configuration because you don't have the rest of the Silverado or whatever that vehicle you got the motor from. Here's a mostly complete stock wiring harness that Rob pulled from the junkyard. You can see the connectors here that go to the ECM. Then over here is basically where all the powers are. This goes into the fuse block. So what I've got over here is just a super simplified version of that. The only pins I have filled in these ECM connectors are the ones for power, which are the pink and orange. Black ones, which are grounds obviously, and then this green one, which is the serial data connector wire that goes to the OBD2 port. On the OBD2 port, you'll see the same things. There's the one power and then two grounds. And the way I'm gonna run this is everything will kind of connect together here. So there'll just be a group of grounds and then a group of powers. This will connect to the ECM. We'll plug this into the wall and we'll be able to tune it on the bench outside the vehicle. So to do this, you'll need a couple things. The main thing being these uh, connectors that go into the ECM, of course. You can get those from the junkyard, from a harness, wherever you get them from. An OBD2 port with uh, a decent amount of wires. You wanna leave, you know, some wires so you can work with it here. Uh, also the junkyard or just cut one out of your daily driver and then uh, a power supply here a uh, 12 volt power supply around a thousand milliamps works for me in that range is usually fine and of course you'll need an ECM to tune if you're swapping an LS truck engine from a 99 to 06 or 07 classic truck this is the ECM you're going to be dealing with I believe it's called the 411 PCM and they either come in the blue and red connector variety or blue and green the difference being the blue and red PCMs are meant to control a cable throttle. Cable like that, those will be from 99 to 2002 for the most part, or 03, I don't know. You can correct me on that in the comments. The blue and green are gonna be the drive-by wire. Uh, for this type of a harness, one thing I did that makes it easier to use is there's these little tabs here that make sure you're using the right kind of connectors, or they're supposed to anyway. But if you grind them down, then this can basically become universal and it can go into the red or the green slots. Once you have everything you need, you're going to want to start wiring it together. So these computer harnesses here, computer plugs, they've got lots of pins in them. From the factory, lots of these are used. Basically, this is very stripped down. Like I said, just to use the power ground and the one serial data connection. Uh, so likely, you're going to have to depin this yourself if you're doing this. So I'll show you kind of how that works, there's these caps that go on here. They only fit a certain way, you can kind of see here. And when you get them off, they'll be on there. There's these little clips, one on that side, and then one on that side. If you just use a small screwdriver, kind of pry in there, pull that up, and then do the same on that side, you can get it off. Be left with this, and then you can see the pins in here. Uh, basically each one of them, it's held in with this little plastic clip here. So you're gonna to wanna to depin all the things you don't need in these connectors. So you just bend this little plastic thing up carefully not to break it. Then usually I find if you put the screwdriver in there and then kind of push and wiggle, you can also pull from the other side to get them out. And then they pop out through there. There's a bit of rubber in there that kind of keeps them sealed, but they'll pop out. Before you start pulling them out though, you're going to want to figure out which ones you want to pull out, which ones you want to leave. And that's where uh, this website lt1swap.com comes in handy. You can see on the back of the connectors here, they have numbers. This one is the blue connector, so you look blue number one, black wire, look in here, blue number one, PCM ground. So basically you want to go through here and make sure you have all the PCM grounds, ignition supply, and battery supply power wires. So once you're done going through both ECM connectors, you can see on the second one there's only two grounds, just a couple powers in the green wire here. Once you're done going through those, you can kind of make them into groups here of all the powers, all the grounds, 
and then this one wire. We'll take a look at the uh, OBD2 port here now. This is a typical OBD2 port that you'll find in basically any vehicle from 96 up, if I remember correctly. Uh, they're all wired pretty much the same. There'll be just the one signal wire, and then there'll be a power. Sometimes there's two powers. If there is, I just put them together. Then there's two grounds, which I have put together here. So that as well is pretty simple. And the way I've got it going here, I've just kind of connected it in line with the other powers and grounds from here. So I'll be able to connect power here, ground there. It'll all be wired together. It'll end up looking a lot nicer than I did it last time. The last piece of the puzzle being the power supply. Like I said, 12 volt, 1000 milliamps works for me. Uh, I found this one just from some old thing I wasn't using anymore. You can probably find them in your house too. Then you want to split it apart like this and figure out which one is the power and which one is the ground. There's a pretty common standard they use with these wires. Apparently the uh, smooth wire will be the positive, the hot. And then this wire that you might not be able to see, but it has, you know, some ribs on it and stuff. Ribbed that, for your pleasure. Exactly, ribbed for your grounding pleasure. This will be the negative. So positive, negative. Uh, there's ways to check this too with plugging into the wall or using a nine volt battery and a multimeter and all kinds of different stuff, but you can look that up if you need to. Pretty much anywhere you look on the internet, they'll say that's a standard, but uh, if you're unsure, you should definitely check it out for yourself. Do a little research. Now that we got everything laid out like this, I'm going to somehow solder all this into one, uh, one wire, connect it to the positive, and do the same with the negative. All right, so I got all the wires stripped, ready to uh, solder together. You can do this lots of different ways. You could use a butt connector, uh, a wire nut maybe if you're if you're that nutty of a person you can or a butt nut is what or a butt nut but uh, today we're gonna be soldering so I got the serial data wire soldered together here uh, my method for doing this I basically just take both wires twist them together in a way that they're still uh, parallel or running the same way, kind of twist them together like that. Do a solder, try to get solder all over uh, basically all of it so it's kind of in there and protected. And you uh, slide some heat shrink over that, use a little bit of lighter action, make that uh, heat shrink close up on there, and you're good. Super tight connection that uh, won't fail. It's really important that you make all these connections well because you don't want power dropping in or dropping out or anything being loose when you're trying to change the programming on the ECM. All right, so I got all that soldered together, got the heat shrink on there, positive, negative, and the three coming from here. You guys can see it's pretty simple. I already started taping this up. I'm just gonna tape all this up so it's nice and uh, held together. Nothing's gonna rip out. You can see also here, I put a zip tie there, just so that if anything pulls on here, it's not pulling on the pins in the OBD2 plug. All right, so I got it all taped up. This is about all you gotta do. You can uh, make it as fancy as you want, but uh, it's just nice to have it kind of cleaned up and wires not hanging out all over the place. So at this point, you'd want to uh, bolt these into the ECM, these little bolts here. Uh, you never want to do them too tight, just so they're snug. And uh, then you plug it in. The way I usually do it is uh, make sure these are connected in there good first, then plug this in, which is essentially like turning your vehicle's key to the key on position, and then uh, plugging in the OBD2 to the HP tuners dongle or whatever interface you're using to talk to the ECM. So there you go guys, pretty simple thing to do. Uh, I learned basically everything I know about this from Sloppy Mechanic Matt and other resources on the internet, so check out that Sloppy Mechanics wiki page if you need any more info, although I think I've pretty much covered it all here. Check out our previous videos for more videos on HP tuners. I'll leave a link in the description to a previous video that goes into the basic tuning stuff you would do with your laptop and HP tuners once you had this harness made. Basic stuff like getting rid of vats and 
all the stuff you guys want to do. So I hope that was hopeful. Uh, <laughs> hope that was hopeful. I hope it was hopeful. I hope that was hopeful. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I know lots of you guys have been asking for it. So here it is. The simple bench tuning harness. We'll be doing a lot more wiring stuff on this thing, obviously. At least Rob will be. So look forward to that and more LS knowledge and all that kind of stuff. It's not all about the LS. It's not all about <laughs> There might be a coyote soon. Or not. Or it's not. Like half the wires, I think. As always, guys, please like, share, comment, subscribe. All that cool stuff you can do for free that really helps us out. And uh, we'll check you later.